Hello, I'm David Wormsey. In this video, I'm taking a look at how we can create some custom bullet point lists, or rather some custom bullet points for our list using just a smidgen of CSS. Now, I should say from the beginning that since version 2.4 of Beaver Builder, at least in the premium versions, there is now a list module, so you can use that instead. This might be handy for those who are using the light or free version from the repository. But personally, I will still be using CSS to style my bullet point list because it gives me more flexibility and I actually think it's much quicker to do. So if you're happy with CSS, this might be the way forward. And how I'm trying to make it easier for myself is with my Beaver Junction plugin, which is free to all. And I've created a template with some examples on and I just drag those in and chuck away what I don't need and restyle them. So that's what I'm going to be talking about here. If you don't want to use my plugin, no problem. It's all pretty simple. CSS I'm talking about here and I've included most of the code that you'll need below on this page which I'll link to in the video. Okay so let me move on I'm going to use my dummy site which has got a light version of Beaver Builder in it. I've got my plugin in there so I can drag in my template. I'm going to drop it here. Now I should say if you did install my plugin some time ago I've just updated this there were some real schoolboy errors in it I'm sure this will improve over time my examples will but you definitely want to update if you haven't recently but anyway let me just go through this so as you can see on this page I've dragged it into it's got another one my wireframe where I'm already using this and what I would suggest with any of these the CSS is included within the individual modules but something like this which is likely to repeat or to keep things tidy you might want to do what I've done here which is I've dragged it in to this and what I've done under the advanced tab I've given it its own custom class and then I've added that custom class before all of the rules remove that and put that in my main CSS file okay so let me go over with this one actually let me just quickly summarize what we've got here so I've got these are pretty much the same thing over here this is an unordered list with some bullet points in it just different styles different bullet points here we're getting into using something called nth child to allow us to mark up things differently give different bullet points to different places within the list and over this section here I'm using an ordered list here and using some numbers with some styling using some of the techniques here and finally because there are so many different examples I could create I've just put a link to I think probably the best resource for this something over at um, CSS tricks and I've put in a, a few of their examples as well okay Let's start with the first one, the unordered list. So with all of these, they're the text editor, so we can just create those very simply. So an unordered list, we just click on that and create our list and an ordered one. We've got the one with the numbers and then that gives us our HTML markup. So that's fine. If I go over to the advanced tab here, so I've marked up some of this with some comments to make sense of it. So all we're doing here is that with our unordered list here, the general styling for it, we need to do first thing is to get rid of the default bullets that happen when we've got a list item, things that are added actually by our browsers themselves. So we have to tell the browser not to show that. And the thing that you'll probably have to mess around with a little bit is just these two values. So this first one, the last one rather, um, is the text indent. So what it's doing is lining it up with the content that was there. Let me just put it back to, and you might have to play around with this because it will alter depending a little bit on the size of your bullet points. And you'll probably have to mess with this one as well, the margin, which is as we're going, um, what are we going, top, right, bottom, left. This is our margin left. Let me just move that. Did you see that? It just moved over to the left. So I'm actually pushing stuff in a place that it wouldn't normally be naturally. So you might decide where you want this because normally it kind of things are moved indented anyway so you'll have to play around with this to your taste now the next thing I want to talk about is the actual list items themselves the li here I'm using something which I use a lot which is a pseudo element before to place content that doesn't exist in the HTML and that is 
this bullet point, we have replacement bullet. Now, I will say what I've done with all of these examples is I've used stuff that will work naturally in HTML, and I've put a link to a place that I go to, which I'll show you in a minute, to put them in. I started off doing some of these where I was using things like Font Awesome, but I think we're about to go into Font Awesome 6, and it doesn't feel like long since we had 4. Now, if you swap out your style sheets in your theme and you forget that you've done this, then you have all sorts of breakages. So I've decided where possible to use something that will stay and remain for all time. So you can easily just swap these out, which I have done on the other examples. So let me just go to the site that I referenced. There are other ones. This is the one that I often go to, and you can find some let's have a look let's see if we can find something to replace this with okay should have prepared uh, uh don't like that oh yes i've been here before that was it yes i'm going to grab that so you can grab it you don't need to grab the code here although you could put that directly into your css but i just grab it from here because it works fine and then make sure that i'm replacing this content make sure that i'm within my quotation marks that they're both there and there we are, I've replaced it. Now, this leads me to the next stuff in the CSS here. So I've got this at the font size. Now it kind of puts out the position in. So I have here this top so I can arrange it. So I had it arranged as I wanted before. This has thrown it out. Let me make it throw it out further. I'm going to take this down to 30 pixels. And you can see this is no longer lining up. But probably, oh, that pretty much did the job. You might want to adjust slightly till you get it right but actually probably zeroing out the top made this fit perfectly with 30 pixels of this bullet point so that's another area where you'll just need to do these adjustments but i still find it much quicker to just make these two kind of four values really and move those around um much easier and the rest speaks for itself here that's just the um the size of the font we've said and the color of the font there okay I don't really need to talk about these two because they are the same thing, just replacing. All I did here was to change the color of the text just to show and the fob just to show that you can use the Beaver Builder styling options still, of course, in these text modules. Okay, so these next ones, we're getting a little bit cleverer with them. Uh, we're using something called Nth Child. So I'm just going to go in here. We've got an odds and evens list. Same things as before. What we're adding here is this thing called nth child odd for this one. So all my ticks boxes are given this style in here. And then I've got one for even. And that's given me all my X's. And as I add to this list, it will just continue like that. Pretty straightforward stuff. There are other ways of doing the same thing. Let me go and show you this one now. So we're using nth child again. And let's have a look. We've got... So we've got these uh, little icons here for female sign and a male sign. So what we're doing here, nth child n plus one, is meaning that really from the first position on your list, it will then just carry on until it's told otherwise. And it's told otherwise here because it says n plus four. So if I keep adding to this, they're all going to be the last style that's here because the CSS is cascading style sheets and it's the cascade that matters. So the last thing, the last rule that comes in is the one that rolls out. So we say, put it from the start of the position and just keep going. And then this comes along after and says, no, just do this until all time. So we've got that split but they'll just continue to be the blue ones as we go down here. But we've got more flexibility if we want to pick out things here. On this example, let's have a look at this list here. So I'm doing the same thing from the beginning, from the first list item. I'm saying carry on with the ticks. And it does until I interrupt it at the fourth position and say from the fourth position, carry on with the crosses. And I do that until I interrupt it again with just five, no N five. So this is telling it to just pick out that one list item, number five. So it picks out that one and then it carries on with the X because that was the last rule after this one. It was the one above it will carry on because I've only said if this was then N plus five, then all of them would carry on being ticked. So as you can see, this combination of messing around with the cascade here allows you to position things pretty much anywhere you want and lots of different ways of doing it. A really good resource for this, I should link really on this page, is this, because it's quite, it can get quite complex. 
uh, at least for my brain. But uh, if this has got some recipes and that kind of makes sense of how you can position things here to get the effect that you want. Okay, let me go back. That's enough on this. Right, finally, here I'm using an ordered list. Let me just prove that is the case. Uh, I'll go into the text module. There we are, OL instead. So we've got an ordered list. So I've selected this and we shall go in here. And this I've borrowed from CSS Tricks here. So I've got some examples here and this is a really good resource. I've changed slightly the code, the styling, and uh, if he tends to use EMs as a measurement and I've been pretty much sticking to pixels. I'm gonna do a video on that, which unit to use, and I'll explain why I'm doing that. And um, I'll just talk about that. But I swapped those over to pixels, probably easier to understand for most. So there's just styling going on here. The only thing I can say here, this is using something to be aware of that to, I borrowed their styling, they're using inline grid, which is the new kind of way of being able to lay out pages. It's pretty much, it's well supported now, but it's still relatively new. So you might find that there's still maybe 5% of people with older browsers who won't see the grid as it is. So you might want to just check up on that if you're using it. But the rest of it, I don't think I need to explain. What's really nice about this is that we can really style our numbers how we like. So we can just add in our own font family if we want it to be very different from our text. And the rest of it, I think, probably will make sense. But it's using this nice little trick of counter reset steps. So it just goes through all of the steps and there's more clever things you can do if you read this article but this is probably all I want to do and here I'm just combining what is there and the whole thing again with the odds and evens here to start each of those individually and finally the same thing again over on this one so we only need to we don't need to put all of the CSS that's in that first one here, we just need to one need to overwrite the, the changes here, which is the color background in this case. So I'm just doing exactly the same as above. Okay, that's enough of that. Let me just quickly talk about one of the examples I've stolen from CSS Tricks, which is this one, because even though I knew about one thing here, there was something quite new to me. So here we've got an order list and it's upside down. Let me just go over to the text there. And in fact, you don't need this bit. If you do it in the editor here, it adds it. It doesn't make any difference. You can just leave it with reversed and it does what you expect. You need to go into the, the text tab here to add this. But if you wanted to reverse your the numbers, you can do that here using that. You can also, you can actually put what number you want them to fall against each list item. So again, it's another thing for an article, probably something I won't need to do. Or you can have a list go up to a certain point and break off and then go to somewhere else for good markup. But anyway, thought I'd just point this out. But the thing I wanted to point out here was the CSS, which has been added. So there is this thing which I didn't know about until CSS tricks called uh, this pseudo element again called marker, which is uh, coloring the fonts over here. Now, I'm not sure what you can actually do with this. It's not really officially supported anywhere. And when I looked it up, it's got something just over 50%. So maybe a nice little thing to do if you're using all the modern browsers. It appears to work for all recent versions of Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, and the Edge, Microsoft's Edge. Um, so it works if you want it, but if you're relying on it, 50% is probably not so much. So you probably won't want to style that way. Okay, and that's it. And you might want to look at the article if you want to get inspiration for other things. But uh, I hope this was useful. And I hope this template is useful to those who are downloading it. Uh, as mentioned, I think in my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about which units to use for your typography in Beaver Builder, kind of contentious subject, but I have a little take on it and it's relevant to this project. So I'll hope to see you again in another video. If you did like this video, then please give me a thumbs up. Please talk to me as well. I like comments, they're really helpful and consider subscribing to the channel. And thank you very much for your time. Talk to you again soon, bye-bye.